So I'm getting good questions about Tron, and again, Tron's a good dog foundation. You say, man, that's a good dog. Stan made a point as we listened to a message from one of the people that I communicate with on IG at times, and uh, she talked about hierarchy in the home and in your pack. Does It's natural for almost the sequence of a dog's DNA to fall back when someone assumes role of leader, and it happens in hyenas, definitely happens in wolves, and in many other what do you call them? Clutch? Species? Yeah, species that, that are pack oriented. Now, here's the challenge. Tron came to us as a, uh, well, you know what I've called the dog. <laughs> Ludacris made a whole song about it. B.I.B.I. Why you have to push him up? And what I have to do, I had to push him up. Tron came to us. Weak minded, weak willed, super reserved. Tron. Hey, hey, hey. Drop it. Hey. Grab it. Let's take a look at his face, people. That looks like a massive. He's got a lot of massive in him, people. That's the truth. That massive in him is real reserved. What happens with a massive is they don't run through fences. We saw it in the movie Sandlot with Benny Nohana. Benny the Jet Rodriguez, he did what? He slid, took off. Massives ain't chasing nobody. They don't have prey drive. They didn't breed prey until they're supposed to stand at the house at a tin hut and guard and protect. So what does Sean do? Instead of him getting in there, he says back, we literally had the puppy videos. He stayed back and just looks. He says, man, y'all crazy. <laughs> Why would y'all do that? That looks dangerous. I ain't fooling with that boy. I might get hurt, but I'm gonna let y'all have fun. Good luck. And he walk off, go give him a little water and keep minding his business. So he said, well, how do I bring this out of a dog? Um, you gotta know me. <laughs> oh, you gotta know Stan. And Jamarcus is still learning, but eventually you have to know Jamarcus in a sense. But here's the thing. What we then done, we poured so much confidence is that we now have to dial things back and communicate effectively. So Stan is gonna get Tron to tune into him, train him a little, get him to some down, some stays, some stuff. Cause remember, you couldn't get him to down. I was about to say, uh, down, we'll see, we'll see what we see with Tron. I mean, I, look, Stan sat on a tree one time. He was on a tree, so I'm trying to get him through it. He owed it about 10 minutes. 10, easy, ten, easy, 10. And, and he was just getting, he's like, he was using a collar and Tron would not do it to go get his most fam favorite thing. And that is what? A ball. He, he was a ball. He that wouldn't do it. Work. All right, Charlie, let's see. That's it. That's it. Come on. Yes, sir. Free. Yes, sir. Boy, that's a good one. Come here. Charlie's a kind of prick, too. When he be doing something, he'll piss on the rope. It's like, bro, all that's this. It. Good. All right. Yeah. Nope. Put your butt down. There it is, pup. Good boy. Down. Ah. Now, I repeat, people, part of the down, too, depending on your breed, it could be the dog doesn't trust you, man. To Good. submit, just like anything, if, you, if I had to take a knee to somebody, you know, it's funny, in sports, you play sports, the coach says, everybody take a knee. He's having you submit so you can hear him out, right? He's about to give you something motivating or tell you guys, good game, or guys, we gotta do better, right? So the dog's the same way you say down. He's like, why would I, why would I go down for you? I don't trust you. <laughs> there it is. Good boy, good down. And, and trust me, I sat outside. Freak. I don't think anybody was around and I had a stool, this same type of stool, and I forced Tron to learn to just down, man. I said, guys, watch this, I got him, I got him. <laughs> And it was because I was like, yo, he's got to listen. And down for us isn't a requirement. It's, hey, can we communicate with our dogs in a way that helps us help you? <laughs> so, guys, what I'm going to tell you this is, Stan, as you continue to go through your assessment of Tron, what are some things you've seen change since, and since he got here to now? I mean, he's not as much of a knucklehead. <laughs> <laughs> and he's more confident now. He's down, like he said, is a submissive position. Oh, shit. <laughs> So he's learning to trust a little bit more. Even this wanting to come here is a, come on, get it. I spoke too soon. <laughs> <laughs> but him even trying to get into these positions is, come on, bro. It's crazy because he definitely picks and chooses his days. Yeah, and that's the, that's the hard part, people. I got to be honest with you. That's the hard part is when you have this type of breed and the people over in the UK, you guys know, your dogs can't make any mistakes. And mind you, ours can't either. So you say, if we can't keep this dog safe, AKA, so that people don't go and you know call the police um, and put us or the dog down, 
then we're probably gonna have some problems long term, you know? Mm-hmm. And so for me, it's not like, oh, he better down. It's like, yo, he picks and chooses when he wants to listen. Yeah. And these type of exercises where we get back here in the backyard and try to work with him are proof that, hey, do I trust him outside with other dogs? Yeah, Tron is not dog motivated at all. He's not aggressive in that regard. I'm not worried about that. But someone else at any moment in time could feel some type of way, be very concerned, and it turn into a fiasco. If your dog in some states, and I'm from Kansas City, on the Kansas side in Overland Park, back in the day, if your dog was a grandfather, if it runs up on another dog, or an Olathe, if it runs up on a person, and the person feels unsafe, hmm. your dog could have to be muzzled for the rest of its life anytime it goes outdoors. And the dog could be run, running up just to say hi, but imagine a dog Tron size jump up, touch their chest, or lick them or something, and they interpret it the wrong way. But bottom line is, in the, in the court of law, did you feel safe or unsafe? Somebody says, I felt really unsafe. That's it. it. There's nothing else to say. Your dog was off leash, law. Your dog ran up on a person, problem. It checked them in their face, issue. Now it's either gonna get put down, you choose. Put down or every time this dog's outside, it's gotta do what? Be muzzled. And you're like, this dog ain't never bit nobody. I don't even, he would never bite nobody. But that don't matter because it all goes off how the person feels when the dog's been identified as a what? Aggressive breed. So we can't have days where Tron gets to pick and choose when he wants to participate in communication or, or just learning how to work with us better. And you go, there's the problem. The problem isn't the down. The problem is he picks and chooses when he wants to follow directions. And I, again, I tell you a thousand percent, Tron's never going to go bite another dog. He's never going to go bite a human. But if any human says, I feel unsafe, it changes my whole dog's life. Yeah. Anything else you want to leave me? No, so when you think about working with your dog commands, these are things that are going to keep your dog safe. Like Trevor said, if we can tell these dogs down, if we can tell them stay or even come, you don't have to get to these issues. Yeah. So spend a little bit of time with your dog. Tron has a dog that's going to take a lot more time because he's not as highly motivated. There goes that Fortnite dance. <laughs> <laughs> that's jerky. You're a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> but take your time. Build a relationship with your dog. It's a simple process. It just it, it seems simple, time. but it ain't simple, people. Especially when we did a, a knucklehead. You gotta be so, simply patient. There you go, yeah. people. Listen. Until next time, people. Keep taking your dog.